find it if you please stand. Amen. As we take these moments together that we have. And since it's second Sunday, we got time to read a few verses that we normally read today. Acts chapter 1. If your neighbor has it, say amen. amen. If your neighbor does not have it, say hold up, wait a minute. Come on, you act like y'all ain't never heard that before. Come on, don't act saved on me. Come on, y'all heard that before. Hold up, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 there it is. You got it. Acts chapter 1. To our visitors, I ain't been saved all my life. Y'all excuse me today. I'm under construction. And God's not through with me yet. Amen. Does want to make sure. Uh, and the reason why we do that for those here for the first time. Because I want to be able to make sure when you leave the sanctuary today. And wherever you may go, the basketball game. Uh, out to eat or hanging around the house talking to your wife or your children and um, and you say how was church today you say the kids sure say how was the preaching you say he sure preached and the third they're going to say well, what did he preach about and it's a sad indictment on the folks here at Pleasant Green and myself if you don't know what the title was the text was and at least one point because that just might be your opportunity to minister to somebody. Right. So though I like to laugh and joke, I'm serious because, you know, why did, and I would say when people respond, well, why did you go? If you can't remember, let's talk back to me. You know, what, what, what was it, the word, because it's the word that keeps us and the word that holds us and sustains us. And so I don't want that here at Pleasant Green Baptist Church. So the book is Acts, chapter number 1, verses 1 through 8. It says, in the former book, Theophilus, I write about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, this or this promise. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by his own authority. And verse number eight, but ye, but ye, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in all Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But you will receive power. You may be seated. Amen. You may be seated. again to say thank you for allowing us to be in worship one more time. Uh, thank you, O oh God, that you've given us the privilege of worship. For we realize, O oh God, you've been good to us, and we pause to say thank you. And now it's preaching time. I'm asking that you allow your people to see you and not me. Hear from you and not I, but they will continue to look beyond my faults and my failures 
and see the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Father, if there be any unchurched or unsaved in the building today, that through this preaching moment, somebody might accept you as Lord and Savior. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 For these moments that we have um, together on today, just I want to encourage somebody today. Um, the message is a, uh, it's, it's one of those messages that kind of uh, just kind of challenges us just a little bit. But there's also good news um, in the text. As we've in 2020, the Lord put on that it's time to move forward um, in our relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, we're uh, going to spend this year, the time that we have on earth, improving our relationship with Jesus Christ. For oftentimes, we work on all our other relationships with our husbands, with our wives, with our children, on our co-workers, but the theme this year is that we would work on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I took a survey early on in the year, and I believe there was probably about 62 people uh, that said had a desire that they would want to be better, um, be better than they were in 2019. I was included. I was number 62. And so as we continue, the, the themes that God has given me, is hopefully my prayer is that would, it would improve my relationship with him and my prayer is that you will improve your relationship as well. So it may not be a whole lot of shouting today. I guess that's what I'm saying. But I believe if you hold on, uh, I think we might find one in the text. Turn to his name, say neighbor. Hold on. When most of us have been in a relationship um, in the past or in the present, um, in one right now. We understand that uh, a relationship is hard work. Y'all got kind of quiet on me. Uh, husbands, I believe y'all can testify that being a husband takes a whole lot of work. Amen. Because a relationship, don't worry if your wife sitting next to you, it's okay, you in church. Yeah, somebody just got tapped on their leg. What you mean it's a whole lot of work. <laughs> and so any relationship, if you want to be a healthy relationship, it takes time, effort, and takes a whole lot of work. And we know a relationship is a two-way street. Amen. Wives, husbands, those in relationships. You know it's not always about you. Amen. Sometimes we have to put our partner first. And sometimes, I'll be honest, that's not always easy. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Because sometimes we, I don't know about you, but sometimes I, don't, I, I like all the blessings. I, I, I like to hear a lot of good things from my wife. But sometimes uh, she says some things to me that I necessarily don't want to hear. Sometimes I just need to hear. So Pleasant Green, I want to encourage you today. It's not always about receiving God's blessings. Oftentimes in our relationship with Jesus Christ, it's easy to shout and scream when we're receiving the abundance of his blessings. Messages are easy to give God praise on when we're talking about what God is doing for us. Do I have a witness? God, make a way out of no way. He's my rock. He's my redeemer. Come on, he out of shout. I'm going to praise the Lord at all times, you know. As long as the Lord is blessing us, it's easy to give Him some praise and some accolades. But also, believe there's some times in a relationship that we have to recognize there's some things that God has called us to do. 
And when we look at the text this morning, if I could just talk for a few more minutes, there are some things in the text that God has called you and I to do. Uh -huh. uh, we have our part in this relationship is shown here in the book of Acts chapter 1. Luke, the writer, the great physician, he was educated. He was a companion of Paul. He was a detailed man. He was organized. Matter of fact, he wrote the book of Acts. And here where he even lets us get a glimpse in Acts chapter 2 of what the early church looks like. For he tells us that the early church prayed together. They ate together. They fellowshiped together. They, they gave everything they had for the church. Even said they were on one accord. They, they worshiped together. And so it was a, a beautiful sight when we look at the early church in Acts chapter 2. But he also, we are mandated as believers in Jesus Christ. You and I are mandated to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't tell us we ought to tell how beautiful the sanctuary we have, how beautiful the carpet looks, how good the choir sounds, how how good the lights look. No, we have been mandated in our relationship with Jesus to tell everybody that we know about a man named Jesus. If you don't mind, let me give you some background. Luke 23 says it. this is the story that we ought to tell. We ought to tell them that they mocked him, they beat him, they ridiculed him, they placed him with poor two thieves. And Luke 40, in verse 44 says, that darkness covered the earth and at 3 p.m., the Bible says, the sun stopped shining and the curtain, the veil, was torn from top to bottom. Yes, sir. In this relationship, we are required to tell them that even Jesus, in Luke chapter 23, verse 46, said with a loud voice as he was on that old rugged cross, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he gave up. The ghost. Yes, For the Bible also says, this is what we got to tell. There was a centurion man, a soldier cried out saying, surely this must be a righteous man. The Bible is clear, it says, that they placed him in Joseph's new tomb. For we realize, oh God, that we realize, people of God, that the Bible says that he stayed on Friday, stayed all night Saturday. But early Sunday morning, Jesus got up with all power in his hand. In this relationship, we are required to tell the story. And the story is that our Savior died, but yet he was risen on the very third day. That is the gospel that you and I must tell. And the gospel is that Jesus, the good news of Jesus Christ. In our relationship with Jesus Christ in 2020, as we move forward, we have to tell the story. It is our responsibility to tell what Jesus has done, not only on that old rugged cross, but to tell everybody that we know that Jesus saved my life, that Jesus turned my life around. It's our responsibility not only to talk about the blessings, we have to also talk about how he suffered, how he died. They nailed him to that old rugged cross. But for you and for me, for the Bible says that God so loved us so much that he gave his only begotten yes. son. I know this is not exciting, but I need to share this with you because if you and I are going to continue to grow our relationship, we have to be able to tell the story. And when I look at this particular text, just in case somebody's here today, wants to know who is responsible for telling the story. Well, in the, the, the Bible says, look at verses 1 through 7, as we take a look at who is responsible for telling the story. The Bible talks about in verse number 1, it says he gives the account, began both to teach to do until the day in which he is taken up, after through the Holy Spirit has given the commandment to who? To the apostles whom he has chosen. Verse number 3 says he presented himself alone after he suffered by many infallible proofs, being seen by them, who's them? The disciples. During 40 years in speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, them being the disciples. He being Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of God from his father 
which we have learned and seen from me. Verse number five says, uh, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not many days after that, therefore they, they who? The disciples had come together. They asked him, who asked him? The disciples saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Verse number seven says, he said to them, who's them? The disciples. It is not for us to know the time or the season which the Father has put into authority. In case you were wondering who is responsible for making sure that we tell the story, it's the disciples. All in the text, Jesus, after he had died, he came back, he spent some time with his disciples. They are the ones that were all at this time responsible for telling the story. I love that because he said, look, I need you to be witnesses. In other words, I need you to share what you saw. Can I tell you some things that the disciples saw while they spent time with Jesus? The same disciples had saw Jesus were handpicked for ministry. These same disciples saw Jesus feed 5,000. These same disciples saw Jesus heal the man with, with leprosy. This same, these same disciples even saw Jesus heal the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. These same disciples saw the, told the winds and the waves to behave. These same disciples had dinner with Jesus before he was crucified. If you give me a few more minutes, the text says who is responsible is the disciples. Who are the disciples? I'm glad you asked. Those who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, blood bought, saved, been redeemed on a hill called Calvary. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Every baptized believer, that's who is responsible to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I believe, church, we've gotten it backwards. We believe that it's the pastor's responsibility. Somebody believes it's the preacher's responsibility. Somebody also believes it's the deacon's responsibility. No, that's not what the text says. The text says if you've been redeemed, saved by the blood of the Lamb, it's all of our responsibility to tell somebody about a man named Jesus. Excuse me, I'm getting a little bit excited because the disciples, when I love disciples, they're just like you and me. They had their faults. They had their flaws. They had their shortcomings. Man might throw them aside, but God saw potential in the disciples. Excuse me, but I'm getting a little bit excited. Uh, let me take it back now. If you want uh, to be a disciple, and if you're serious about being a disciple who is a follower of Jesus Christ, Tell your story. All right. yes. Tell them what the Lord has done for you. Yes. And the good news is, uh, it's a way that he was able to express his love toward the disciples. And I love that because in this relationship, we, we have some benefits in our relationship. Some of the benefits that we have, we have God's love, his unconditional love, his grace, his mercy, all that comes with being a witness for Jesus Christ. So if you want church growth, if you want to pack the house, be a witness. If you want the community to change, be a witness. Because there's somebody who needs to hear what you have to say. And the text is encouraging, but yet challenging because it's everybody's responsibility to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. If, 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 you're, if you don't want to go to heaven all by yourself, tell somebody about a man named Jesus. Now I'm going to take a survey early on in the text. Is there anybody here today that came on somebody else's witness? Come on, I'm asking you to raise your hand. Come on, if you're here on somebody else's witness. Now everybody didn't raise their hand, so let me park for a second. Because I believe all of us are here on somebody's witness. We just didn't wake up when we were born and said, look, I'm going to the church house. No, some of us, excuse me, took a detour. We went to school, but when instead of going to church, we went down to the campus. 
candy store. Instead of going straight to church, we went to Cartier's. Some of us took a detour to get to where we are today. But I got some good news in the text today. Thank God somebody came in your life and told you about a man named Jesus. Come on, y'all still kind of quiet. I don't know who the witness is, but if I would take a roll call, it might have been your mama. Because your mama got you up early on Sunday morning. Mama told you it's time to go to Sunday school. Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher. Maybe it was Brother McMillan. Maybe it was Sister Butler teaching from the piano on 2002 Willis Avenue. Somebody told you about a man named Jesus. Maybe it was your daddy that told you about Jesus. Told you that if you don't get right, son, you're going to go to hell. But the good news is if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm getting excited. Do I, do you got, can you name your witness this morning? Maybe it was your grandma that told you about Jesus. Maybe it was the pastor that told you about Jesus. Maybe it was your friend who told you about Jesus. But
says, who's responsible? We're responsible. But also love something else in the text. If you desire to be a witness, God promised you and me that he would give us what we need. For the text says a promise is an announcement, declaration, assurance that that, that, that what a particular thing will happen in our lives. And, and what he promised, and I'm, I'm about ready to go home, he promised the Holy Spirit yes. would be with you and me. Yes. And so as we go out into the streets of Omaha, Nebraska, yes. we can be a witness for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. On our jobs, we can be a witness. In our homes, we can be a witness. And he gives us everything that we need. Is anybody here standing on his promises? For the text says, the text says, wait for the gift my father has promised. Now I need to pause and ask you today, is anybody here living off God's promises? I'm glad that he sent you and me the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says, but my helper, the Holy Spirit, who my father will send in my name, he will teach me all things that I need to say. Is there anybody glad that the Holy Spirit is working in your life? He's on the top shelf and not the bottom shelf. For the Bible says, when the helper comes, who I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father will testify for me. In other words, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is our comforter, He's our guide, He's our all and all. In other words, Pleasant Green, thank God you and I have His promises. Promises, when He promises something, He never breaks it, He delivers services. If God says he's going to deliver something, he delivers right on time. Folks used to say, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Is there anybody in the house that can testify and say, you know what? I'm standing on God's promises. I've been through some storms and the rain, but I've held on to his promises. It didn't look good, but I just held on because I remembered what he promised me. Some things, but he broke it. Mama promised, but she broke it. My friend promised me, but he broke it. But when I look into the word of God, he promised to supply all my needs. He promised that if I wait upon him, he shall renew my strength. He said, They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
witnesses. And let me tell you, there's something about this witness. Our witness goes everywhere we go. Holy Spirit goes where we go. And I'm afraid of Pleasant Green. We've taken the Holy Spirit to some places that we shouldn't take it. So I want to encourage you today, before you get on Facebook and talk resources 